Oh, right then. So, obviously, what you're all asking, we've all been begging for in your lives, what you didn't know you desired was the ability to know whether a particular satellite was above your head or not. Um, this really interesting topic. It honestly is a really interesting topic. And we just wanted a very practical way of saying, can I see this thing? Or when is the next time I'll be able to see this satellite? Uh, Python, and tons of other libraries do as well, but Python has a bunch of very interesting Pi astronomy libraries, which I thought, I went in the astronomy route going, okay, I, I, can, I can use astronomy libraries to work out when something's in orbit, and then work out where that is in comparison to me, and whether that's above or below the horizon. It turns out, actually, that's a really difficult thing to do, and I went down this rabbit hole a few months ago of actually planning how I could leave Earth orbit and what the best opportunity is for the least amount of propellant to get to Mars and realised that I had gone way off track, way off topic and I had to look for a better library. So there's a thing called Beyond, the library, Python library is called Beyond and I'm going to show that today. It's a fantastic little library. It's a bit like in documentation. One of the big problems with Pi astronomy is if you're not really into astronomy, if you haven't done the mathematics of astronomy uh, and orbital dynamics, then actually it, it can be a little bit foreign. Some of the terminology which you were just expected to know um, is there and, and you just don't necessarily know how to use the libraries or how to use them. Beyond is really actually really simple under the hood. It has a few big dependencies like NumPy and things like that, which you know you kind of expect for what's going on. And the end result is you get something like this. And this actually is an orbital plot from a little while ago. And I'm very interested when this particular line comes overhead. This is the weather satellite. It's one of the NOAA weather satellites, which I like to listen to. That is coming up on a future episode. So all of this, by the way, is prepping to do a bigger project and breaking down small bite-sized chunks. So I'm just interested in knowing when are these satellites above the horizon. In fact, I want to know when they're really high above the horizon, because if they're just skirting the horizon, I can't hear them. Because uh, there's trees and buildings and all kinds of stuff in the way. Um, so basically, let's have a look and see what information there is out there. The first thing is that there is something called two-line element sets. So the uh, various organisations, but the US government in particular, NOVAD, publish something called two-line element sets. And what's interesting is about two-line element sets is there's three lines in them. Now these actually define, um, there's some stat, this is from the Wikipedia page, there's some static information in here about when the um, the spaceship was launched, you know, what its actual satellite catalogue number is and so on, its international designators. So some of this data never changes, but then some of these things actually give you a very accurate um, snapshot of where the satellite is is or was at a particular point in time, from, the, from there onwards you can then calculate where it will be some time after that point, because you understand its orbit um, in terms of, of how far around the planet is from a reference marker. Now what happens is these figures actually change, uh, so even if you have a satellite because the complexity of the Earth, because the Earth isn't, if you play Kerbal Space Program you'll realize all the planets are perfectly spherical, well the Earth isn't, it's, it's lumpy, bits are heavier than other bits so your orbit will actually change over time. So what you need to do is you need to fetch a new version of your two-line element, which is three lines. And so no redslashtrack.com have these no-rad elements um, from here. And you can basically nip into these, and you can nip into... I'm, I'm, I'm interested in nowhere at the moment. So we nip into there, and you can see I've got all these elements <coughs> behind me. So I'm actually interested in NOAA 15. So these are still flying, even though you can't talk to them, the satellites are still in orbit. I'm interested in NOAA 15, NOAA 18, and NOAA 17, I think. But anyway, uh, NOAA 15 is certainly interesting. So what you can do is you can just grab those elements and just paste them in. Because this is a text file, it's cached actually, so you can actually pull this down with relatively regular frequency. Uh, I know some of the um, uh, various tools that I use pull it down like once every 10 minutes, so which I think is a bit too often. So what I would do is I would pull this file once a day, um, I cache it at my end, take a copy and have a little cron drop to update it. So basically I take, I also pass this file, this file takes a bit of passing, but you can just want you know, it's very easy because it's always name one two name one two so it's really easy to to parse and then I, I put them in a dictionary by this so I can then look up what it is so I'm looking for NOAA 15 lines so as you can see here what you do is we just drop in those three light elements into here if you had the parser it would do all that for you uh, and this parses out all the components and that builds up what is a TLE object which we're going to use in an orbit you see here we actually say get the orbit object back from that TLE and what we're interested in is a particular date range for the orbit. 
what that actually does by the way here I'm creating a station I've just hidden my location a little bit um, I actually use quite an accurate GPS coordinate the name is irrelevant I could put though know, uh, my garden in there it doesn't look it up you have to give it the exact coordinate so I, I usually give this like three or four if not um, yeah four or five decimal places of accuracy there and I need to turn my notifications off because I always forget to do that um, there we go and yeah, so basically, um, this this does the calculation for you. Now, what the orbit actually is, it's not, like you might think, a circle. It's a collection of points. And what we're doing really with NumPy when we draw this is we're actually saying, take the collection of points and connect them together like a dot to dot. I know it's a dotted line here. That's not the points. That's just I'm using a dotted line. Um, it hit my side if I put a sign hyphen, maybe. And run that again. Uh, that didn't do anything. Wonderful. I obviously don't know what the dotted line I'm plotting is. Map plot lib. But there you go. That, that's that's the orbit that was calculating. I just recalculated the orbit for now. Um, and you can do this for longer periods of time. So I can say I actually want the, I want the calculation to be a bit longer. I want a bit less. Anyway, you're collecting a, a series of points as you go around. Now. What you do with the station is say, create me a station. And then what you're basically doing is, is you're saying, let's loop over that orbit, however long the orbit is. It's one orbit or it's 24 hours or whatever it is. Um, I'm looping over it, I'm saying, basically, can I see from this location on Earth, can I see that point or not? And if I can, if it's the first time I can, we say we've acquired sight. So for those of you who know, I live in Norwich. I don't actually, but near enough. Uh, acquired site, I can see it and I can keep on seeing it until that value has reached a maximum. So I, so the height above the horizon has reached a maximum, so I can say that's the max. And I keep on going until I don't see it anymore, at which point I say I've lost sight. So this column here is, is the altitude basically above the horizon. But I've also got the figure for how far around it is. Um, and you basically do it over and over for every orbit until you have a collection of these these outputs. Now, if you go to the Beyond.py's um, website and click on the predicting satellite visibility, that is the script it will tell you. It will say you do this, and it gives you this this set of outputs. Now, it actually only gives you one, and I, I, I do it to give me more. So it has acquired site, maximum, lost site. And the, the number of small points that you put in is very important. And they've mapped that onto a graph, and as you can see there, those are the actual points it's tested. It goes further apart here. This this polar plot, you've got to imagine sort of projecting that onto the inside of a sphere, which you've got over your head. So it, it, it doesn't go faster overhead, it's just the angle for that speed. Bear in mind these things are moving at, at 7, 8 kilometres a second. Um, which is insanely fast. That is that is a fraction of a second go shung over the top. So obviously if you put more points in you'll get more accuracy, but I don't actually care because the thing is when it's down here there's trees as I can mention, hills in the distance, in the way. So I only really care about where this point is in the middle and then plus or minus 5 minutes, 5-10 five, minutes for my window of opportunity for these sort of satellites. So back to my code, I can do exactly the same thing and I can run this and I get back uh, on a different a different, view, different Jupyter notebook. I can calculate the plot where these, these, these curves are going to be and where they're going to be. I actually think this is this isn't a very useful output, by the way. I don't think this is very useful. So I've actually rewritten this uh, code a little bit, and I will publish my code. It's not going to go live today, but I will be push my code to actually generate me uh, a table. And my table looks it's it's basically the same same stuff. Although I think I've got to run my entire code. Hold on, let me just run through my code base. Here we go. So it's calculating these now, and it's basically going to calculate me. An entire pass. So what I have here is the start time of the pass, I the earliest I can see it, um, and then it has basically in UTC. Really important that uh, everyone picks a time to use. I'm using UTC, because, which isn't the same. I'm currently on British summer time, but I'm using UTC, and it also gives me the highest point it's going to go to, and I can work out whether I want to get up at that time to do it. So here I can see 16 degrees. I'm going to I'm going to struggle to to hear 16 degrees. Anything over about 30, I'll, I might consider. So here I can see I've got this quite a strong pass here at 70 degrees. No, not 59. This one's going to happen tomorrow at uh, 8.21. So it's 9, 8, 9 o'clock in the morning. Might try and listen to that one. Um, 
and again, another episode as to what we're actually doing when we listen to it. So these tell me whether they're worth it. So what we can now, and there's my polar plot, so I've seen that these are going over. Now these particular satellites, as you can see from 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 here, they sort of come from the from from the south east and they go up to the north west, or they're on this leg and they're coming back down again. Now you see here, they don't legs don't line up, so basically they're going over the world. Site. So what I see is I see it come past. I it will basically come past here, then it will come past here, and it will come past here. So it goes over Germany, then it goes over France, England, then it will go over Spain and Ireland, and then it will go over, uh, you know, Morocco and 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 all these African countries, and then finally it will go over America. And by by the time it's starting to go over this coast of America, then the down leg will start coming down. So it's coming down from Norway and Sweden down this way, and it's coming down over England, clips Spain, Portugal. And then starts hitting Brazil, and then then it will be Iran, and then it's gone again, and I won't be able to hear anymore. So I get these windows where I get three or four passes. And you see here, I'll get uh, six, eight, and nine, and then I'll hear nothing until sixteen, seventeen. And I'll probably get three or four passes, depending exactly where it falls. So it goes around the Earth continuously, um, and that's what I want to see. So I know I now have code which will tell me exactly where the satellite is right now, what direction it is. I have code which will tell me when the next pass is, so I know when to start thinking about looking for the satellite. So we're beginning to have the building blocks with this one library called Beyond to start thinking about building some servo motors which will point at a satellite as it goes overhead. Um, what more can you ask from a library? It's a wonderful, beautiful little library. The documentation is um, slender. Um, it's got it's got basically um, um, Sphinx read the docs themed thing. Um, y you basically pick it up, throw it at it, and look hunt goo code online to try and get something to work. Um, there are some cool things about how to actually do the calculations of of um, low Earth orbits and, and various other things to work out. There's a, I think constellations actually know whether something is in a constellation or not as well, which which uh, it's quite cool um, but that's it really I think you can get away with just using orbits and I was looking into how oh the other thing the one thing you do need to watch out for uh, date objects date objects you can use uh, date.now but I found several of these libraries actually have their own inbuilt date objects often these dates can be converted to from a date time object um, I'm not exactly sure why it's it's interesting and i wonder if it's because they're doing something about um accuracy or they're doing something about the calculations but i found that a lot of the astronomy systems a lot a, like nearly all the astronomy systems don't use the default date time they use their own date system uh, but this one is quite nice that you can give it now and you can say time to stop in 24 hours and it will convert it into the entire date time so you don't really need to worry about that um, and that's it really um a lot of code here a lot of magic variables um, R is uh, one thousand steps. Uh, so yeah, that's basically that's that's basically my little bit of code. I will publish this later so you can find satellite. I'm also got some extra code which will grab it from Celestial Track, let's 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 track, um, and then we'll say so you can say tell me where this is in relation to where I am, and it, as a function it will just go and do it. So it's like a wrapper around beyond. Uh, I'm also going to cache this as well. I think. Uh, that's it really. It's a really short video. What can I say? So if any of you guys um, have particular libraries that you like, please let me know. I know we sometimes go and talk about weird and fun libraries. Um, but that's it. I, I, well, what can I say? Cool, draw, cool, draw cool evil genius pictures of satellites passing overhead. Everyone needs it. Um, and by the way, if anyone uh, wants to have a guess at what our end goal of this project is, this is a multi-part project. It's going on for about, well, it's been going on for about about twenty years now, as far as I'm concerned. But in 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 real arguments, we've been working hard on this for maybe about six months here and there. Um, so if any of you want to have a guess what the end goal of this project is, put it in the comments below, and we'll see how accurate you can get. You might get it on your first guess, and then you can be really smug about it, um, or you might not. You might just be thinking it's going to go into some weird, I don't know, firing rockets into black holes. Um, because why not uh, no have a guess down below uh, if you like this hit like hit subscribe uh, thank you very much and see you soon